All right, welcome back to the last part of our rifle scope series here. And in this video, we are going to talk about these specific rifle scopes and go over some of their features, why you might buy one of these, and why, why it might be right for you. The other uh, parts of this video we went through, or this series we went through, you know, picking the right rifle scope for yourself, selecting the right one based on your needs and what you use that for. So let's jump into some of these specific scopes. We'll go over some of their details and specs and whatnot. And can help you make a decision if any of these are right for you. Let's start here with the Leupold VX3 HD. This one is new here this year for, uh, for Leupold. It is a four and a half to 14, but they also make this in a couple other options as well. Quite a few actually, a couple different reticles. Of course, they have a ton of <coughs> other scopes out there also. This one does have your, your side parallax, which is really nice. It's kind of a, a hybrid between your low end scope and your, your your huge scopes like this Athlon Cronus here. It's kind of a great hunting rifle type scope. It's that, a great budget yeah, option it's, for sure. I mean it comes in I think their their range is anywhere from I think it's around 500 up to 750 maybe a little bit less. HD glass. Yeah, you know, HD glass really good glass so it's a great scope and you do have that that locking uh, adjustment here with the zero stop so it kind of gives you that that really good of both worlds really good option the, you know, depending on what you want to do, it gives you the ability to go it's somewhat long range if you want, but also just a great set and forget type scope if you want that as well. Right, and the CDS yeah. dial too, which is nice, and we haven't really talked about that. We talked mm -hmm. about BDC reticles, but you know, having a BDC type of a turret like right. that that can be cut for your ballistics, yeah. you know, what your bullet, yeah. your elevation, your temperature, yeah. your right. you know, your muzzle velocity, all that stuff, mm -hmm. you can do that. Yeah. And only having 15 minutes of elevation, like with my setup, I would only be able to get. Mm -hmm. 750 out of that right with, yeah. with 15 minutes of elevation adjustment which is yeah if that's all you need that's all you need yeah, right yeah. if you're not going to shoot sure, past so. five six hundred you know that's yeah. plenty so. um, of course the step below that is just your basic nikon uh, pro staff that's just your three to nine not a whole lot of adjustment there um from there the two the, the next step up if you will in the sense of if you're wanting to get a little bit into the more long range stuff um, or have the ability to do that. You got the Sig Tango here. This one comes in MLA or mill. Uh, this particular model is mill and uh, it real nice, real nice tactical turrets, illuminated, uh, illuminated reticles here, and you know, that's a nice option. They give you and side parallax, uh, windage turrets. Now these are not locking, uh, like we talked about in one of the videos here. Some of these are locking, like this track here. We'll show you in a minute. Uh, this one. Uh, it has a zero stop, but it's not a locking, so you don't pop it up. It just it just spins. So it's it's designed more uh, for the folks that don't want that locking turret. So this the Zeiss here, six to twenty-four by fifty millimeter objective. I forgot to mention this is a forty here on the Leupold. The Sig is also a fifty millimeter objective. So the uh, the Zeiss Conquest V4, fifty millimeter objective, six to twenty-four. Uh, you've got Gosh, I can't remember all the, the minutes of elevation on all of these off top of head. We'll do some more detailed on each of these, so some more reviews and videos and whatnot, so stay tuned for those. But uh, you've got a real nice dial system here. I love their zero stop system. Zeiss makes a really, really nice one. Uh, you're illuminated here and it's side parallax. And then like we mentioned earlier, on this side, your, your windage turret here locks as well, so that stays in place, which is really, really nice. The glass on the Zeiss is just phenomenal. It's it's outstanding um, so it's a really great option and it's kind of that again a similar uh, space of a bridge between super long range shooting and a basic rifle so you've got plenty of features here to get pretty long range if you want to but it's not gonna uh, you are it's not gonna be upset that you bought that no you sure. won't you for sure will not that's a, it's a fantastic skill now let's see if I can move this guy a little bit out of the way for you here so you can take a look here at the like that there we go so this one is the tracked toric ultra hd this is their 5 to 20 model it has a ton of elevation adjustment as well so it's not quite as much magnification as the zeiss or the the sig there but you know at 20x you're gonna you know that's, that's, that's gonna get you a long ways out there you know, farther than most people are going to shoot this one's really nice that you've got locking uh, turret, or, uh, locking, yeah, locking turrets here. So and the zero stop, so you can pull that up, 
lock it down in place and it's going to stay until you set it back to your zero. Both the windage and elevation both uh, lock on you there. You've got the illuminated reticle here as well and your side parallax. And I did throw on here some of the aftermarket stuff like we talked about. I got the, the bubble level and the, the throw lever and the caps here. These all come uh, as, a, as a bundle option from Tract, which is really nice. Um, I like these kind of flip up covers. Some people don't. They can get in the way of your cap if you're shooting with the cap, but yeah. kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, you yeah, know, pros it, and cons get in there. I ran them before, and mm -hmm. I've, a lot of my scopes don't have them. Yeah. You know, this, my hunting scope, I don't have them because it yeah. lives in a, in the a case, scope yeah. cover. It depends on what else you're using, yeah. yeah. Right, you know. I have that scope cover, or the, the rifle cover that covers the whole rifle, yeah. barrel, barrel, channel, muzzle, action, yeah. scope, everything, so, so I don't really need it, um, so that's why yeah. I don't have them on that, it's just yeah. something else I didn't need to right. throw on there for weight, even though they don't yeah. weigh a whole lot, but, yeah. Um, yeah. it's just kind of one of those things, when I pop that rifle cover off, you're I don't want to have to go, oh crap, I gotta flip yeah. up the... Right. You know, <laughs> Yeah, if you're not running a full yeah, cover, you like got to protect, protect the optics in one way or another. I, I've got the, if I'm not running something like that, I've got the, the neoprene cover yeah. like that. No, those are nice. That's, that's what I've ran in the past, those neoprene covers. They tend to yeah. you know, protect your turrets too, not just your glass, but it yeah. also protects the keeps glass. Everything but it's kind of yeah, nice. It's, it's, scratching up and it's hard to be you know, a good set of flip-up covers though. You know. I, yeah. I prefer ones that are clear. I know Butler yeah. Creek makes some that are clear, some just in case you forget, you forget yeah. <laughs> and you, you throw it up to make a quick shot, you're like, oh man. Yeah, so exactly. You're not going to get the full optical quality, but at least yeah. you're going to be able to see. See something, yeah. yeah. Um, so stepping up, I think this, we can't talk too much about this I guy, can talk about the specs on it yeah, and stuff. It's, it's, it's they're, a, they're pretty general specs. Yeah, it's this, a, this is the start. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. I think it's probably going to get released in the fall. Um, it's a 4 to 16. Power 50 millimeter objective, 30 millimeter tube. Um, it's got cap turrets, so they're yeah. they're finger adjustable turrets, which are nice. They're uh, they're not big tactical turrets. They're capped. Um, I can dial if I need to. It's got a BDC reticle in it. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I got out to 500 yards with my BDC turret. It's also got um, wind holds for you know your five to six mile an hour wind to um, and then it's got another dot for you know, 10 to 12 mile an hour winds depending on your ballistics and stuff like that it's those are general numbers mm -hmm. illuminated radical side focus parallax yeah. um, kind of a rubberized coating on the yeah. magnification yeah. lever it's nice. smooth it's nice and smooth too yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's lightweight. It's 22 yeah. and a half ounces, yeah. so yeah. it's a good lightweight scope for a hunting rifle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not as light as say the Vortex LHT, which is like 19 ounces, yeah. which is stupid light. Yeah. But a good scope if somebody's yeah. trying to build a lightweight hunting rifle, right. they don't want you know Something one big and big bulky and heavy yeah. on there. But um, yeah, so there's, know, there's a lot of options that way. Yeah, and I I apologize. I don't know all the weights on all these off the top of my head exactly, but. I know that this Zeiss is, is real lightweight, it's in the low 20s, it's about 20 ounces, uh, somewhere like that. Uh, the SIG is similar to that. Um, that that loophole is going to be pretty lightweight. Yeah. This tract is definitely heavier, uh, it's uh, 30, low 30s in the ounces, something like that. Um, it's it's real well built uh, type of a right. scope, no, but it's and I would imagine yeah, that Athlon's probably real close to it's that. It's thirty four or thirty six yeah. ounces in that ballpark, so and you're definitely getting heavier that way if you're going going up to that type that's of. That's kind of what we had talked about earlier. Is mm -hmm. you know, what's your purpose for this scope? Right. If you're trying to do a lightweight mountain rifle, yeah, you have no business throwing no. on one of these yeah. big scopes. That yeah, something like, yeah. the Vortex Razor HD yeah. Gen twos, you know. 46, 48 ounce. Yeah. I mean, that's it's a big that's getting stupid scale. heavy for a, a lightweight rifle. But yeah. you know, if you're not going to pack a rifle out or you don't care about the weight, you want yeah. some of the features. You know what? Yeah. yeah. Nobody's ever going to tell you oh, that was stupid. Yeah. Well, I should say that. They will. Somebody yeah. might. Yeah. But you know, it really yeah. depends on what you want. If yeah. you're trying to do, I know the craze nowadays is super lightweight. Yeah. The rifle I built, it's okay. I think set up the way it is right there. It's 11 pounds, which. Yeah. It's kind of a medium weight build, yeah. you know, with ammunition and everything yeah. in it. It's yeah. that, but it's a short magnum cartridge, just right. 300 short mag. 
I don't want nothing. It's not going to be fun to shoot an no. eight pound, three hundred short mag, <laughs> yeah. right? So I've shot that a lot, and that's mm -hmm. part of the your whole system is you got to right. go out and shoot. And if it's not fun to shoot that rifle, you're not yeah. going to go practice. Right. You're not going to shoot it. So exactly. That's that's kind of my two cents on yep. that. Sorry, we no. got no, on a tangent. Tang those are easy to do. Yeah. Uh, getting up to the. Uh, the upper end, if you will, if you're wanting to really get into long range, that extreme yeah. long range stuff, you're going to get into something like this, uh, the Bushnell Elite Tactical XRS 2. This is 4.5 to 30 and a 50 millimeter objective. It's a mill. Um, it's not illuminated, um, but the, you know, real nice, real nice crisp uh, adjustment there on the turrets. Uh, you do have your side parallax as well. Again, it's a heavier, I think a 34, 36 ounces, if I recall correctly, ballpark. On that in a 34 millimeter tube, whereas everything else has been a 30 millimeter tube for the most part here. So you got more weight, but I mean it's it's your mile plus type right. of it scope. It you is, know, yeah. it, it's, you're you're going to build yeah. a competition rifle yeah. that you're going to want to shoot mm -hmm. to get to that type of a distance. You're going to need a cannon scope base, and you're going to need the elevation adjustment right. that some of these bigger scopes have. Yeah. That's just the fact right. of the matter. You, right. You're not going to do it without no. scope. Right. So it's. It's definitely it's a made purpose for build. purpose, right, yeah. 100%. And similar to that is the Athlon Cronus, very similar specs, uh, four and a half to twenty nine. Um, you've got your your uh, MOA elevation adjustment here, real nice tactile. It's just a great feel on these turrets, uh, windage and elevation. They don't lock, uh, but again, it's maybe not geared as much towards the hunter. Not that you couldn't hunt with that by any stretch. I probably will this year. Just. Or, you know, just right, because you, you know the limitations of <laughs> right, it, though, which yeah. is nice. You yeah. know, it's all about the knowledge that you have. You know, going in that, hey, if this isn't a locking or a zero stop turret, yeah. I'm gonna have to keep an eye make, on it as you go. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're gonna have to watch what you're doing, yeah. and before you take that shot, you're gonna have to peek at it. Yeah, a little bit. absolutely. So it's just knowing what your your limitations are. Oh, your equipment, are. Yeah, like 100%. everything. Yep. So you you do have illuminated reticle on this guy as well, and your side parallax. But, and this one is the only one here that's a 56 millimeter objective like we talked about in some of the other videos. Oh, Just a monster. Um, and some of them have sunshades. I got a sunshade on that and the, uh, the, the tract here as well. I've got one for the Zeiss. And I think these two have them on as well. Yeah, the Forge and the XRS2. You don't really need a sunshade. You know, they're, they're kind of nice, but they're certainly not necessary. Um, you know, if you've got one, throw it on if you like it. If not, whatever. But it, it's one of those things where, you know, again, like you said, purpose built, you pick up one something that's going to be fitting what you're going to use it for. And, you know, maybe something you want to grow into. If you're just getting into it, you get something that you can grow into as well. That way you don't have to buy another one down the road. But, but that's the Athlon Cronus. It's a fantastic scope as well. Optics are phenomenal on that. Really, really like it. You get just a ton of elevation like the, the Bushnell XRS2. Uh, this one, I believe, if I remember correctly, has like 110 minutes of, of elevation. Yeah, don't quote yeah. me on it, but it's it's. Uh, <laughs> that. I, I don't know if you guys can hear this at home, but as he's been going around some of these scopes, you can definitely tell yeah. which ones are tactile and, yeah. and audible. Like, yeah. And me, for when I'm in a store and I'm looking at these scopes, one mm -hmm. of the first things I'll do is I'll go to the turrets right. and see how. If they're crisp, if they're mushy, if they're yeah. tactile, if they're audible, yeah, you know, if they're their witness marks alongside the yeah. the turrets are, are lining up. You yeah. know, if you're if you're going and you're in the middle yeah. of you know mm -hmm. one or one point right. two five MOA yeah. one and a quarter whatever, if, that drives me crazy. I'm sure. OCD about that. If those <laughs> lines don't line up, I get so yeah. pissed. So you and you'll see that sometimes in some of the lower end scopes yeah. is that line won't line up. All yeah, the way. you bet. Yeah, and I've heard that from a lot of folks that have used these these Athlon scopes. They're just the turrets are, are fantastic. Yeah. There, you can hear them. And you know, when you're out in the field, if it you got your you know if it's cold out and you got a beanie on or whatnot, yeah. and you're trying to to dial that in, it, having that little bit of audible click is is kind of a nice thing. As well. You so, can count them, and so yeah. if you can't see it or whatever, you yeah. can count them and hear it. Yeah. yeah. So. That's a quick rundown. See, I think I talked about the forge as well. I can't remember if I did or not. Yeah, um, a little bit, but they discontinued, they discontinued the, yeah. that. Unfortunately, it's an it's a great scope. I actually took my my deer with that last year, um, and like we talked about earlier, is I think 320 yard 
shot and I didn't I mean it goes up to 27 power and I think I put it to 16 and that was yeah that was plenty, that was plenty. you yeah. know um, yeah, so you don't fun. most time need all that that extra magnification I'm actually but, impressed that you yeah. didn't use all that because most people yeah. are just like zip <laughs> all the way up yeah. you know if you got that magnification yeah, use it, it yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely yeah. not a huge fan of that yeah huge magnifications for hunting yeah because yeah. yeah. often people don't have your kind of restraint yeah. just yeah. just a little yeah. bit yeah. right yeah but uh yeah, there, there. It's that's a good scope too. If you can still find it out there, it's, it's got actually really. I was really impressed with the optics on it, locking turrets, uh, windage and elevation, and your side parallax down to 25 yards. Some of these just go down to 75 yards, like the Elite Tactical. And granted, you know, you're not gonna buy this scope to shoot 75 yards. So um, that's well, you know, you know. kind of the thing nowadays is that NRL the 22 kind of stuff and so guys are putting on these big scopes on yeah, those little 22s true. that is true and a lot of those shots you might need to get to that low that's true yeah. that's, so good that's a good point that's a good point yeah kind of i guess goes. i think of it more in a hunting rifle situation but right, yeah, you're yeah. absolutely right yeah, though. Those, that's, those little plinking 22s yeah. might so that's a rundown of these scopes um drop any questions or comments on any of these we're happy to help uh point you in the right direction if, if we certainly can by any stretch we'll we'll uh we'll do what we can to help you out uh, Again, thanks, Roger, for going Thank through you. this video series. It's been a lot of fun talking rifle scopes and getting into some of the details, some of the weeds. You know, we didn't get too far, I hope, into I too much. To, <laughs> tried to hold back. Tried to hold back, but uh, yeah. there are a lot of topics here we can really could have really gone off the rails on. So, but we uh, hopefully you found this helpful in you know picking your scope for yourself, and maybe one of these will be a good fit for you. If not. You know, keep looking, find the one that's right for you. That's it's important to find something that's gonna be the piece of, of gear that's gonna fit you best in, in your rifle build and whatnot. So, uh, thanks for watching here today. Again, thanks for uh, Roger for joining me. We really appreciate the time, and and uh, we will see you next time in the next video.